Your friend Rach tries to get real scientific on you. One second. I'm skipping ahead. Skipping ahead. Okay. Get ready, you guys. Rachel Hollis believes she can change the narrative around health and mental health. Okay, here's the deal. I'm about to nerd out on some science, so I feel like it's important to note that I am obviously not a doctor. This is information I have because I've read a bajillion books on a subject that fascinates me, in this case, how the brain works. I'm going to describe this as I understand it, but if it doesn't sound scholarly, well, you know why. The point isn't that this is eloquent. The hope is that you gain an understanding of why it's so hard to make good decisions in a difficult season. Back in the 1960s, yeah, this is where we're going, a neuroscientist named Paul D. McLean formulated a model for something called the triune brain theory. There's some debate over exactly how our brains evolved, but for explaining how each part of the brain works, there's no better reference that I know of. Feel free to go read up. Uh, feel free to go read up on it using all the scientific terms your heart can handle, but I'm going to explain it as simply as I can. The word triune, in case that's not something that's part of your current vocab, means three in one. It's most commonly used in reference to the Holy Trinity, but for Dr. McLean's purposes, it referenced the idea that the brain could be divided into three sections. Stick with me, you guys. This is so powerful. Stick with me. Oh my goodness, everybody. That was wild. It's wild. She's wild. For this particular model, there are three sections. <sighs> this is what she claims. And uh, her latest uh, podcast uh, spoke about uh, stress and anxiety. Or not a podcast. It was her uh, most recent uh, Instagram live that was also posted on YouTube. And it just seems to be constantly the same that Rachel Hollis is just really trying to move herself into the health and mental health space. And I think it's really bad. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think that's bad and why the normalization of these so-called non-expert experts is really getting quite insidious in our culture and something I'm hoping that we can have an intelligent conversation around and not just describe people who have concerns about unlicensed, non-credentialed individuals giving information on uh, topics that they're not qualified to give that information on, uh, why it's problematic. It's not because we're haters. It's because we do actually have concerns coming from a professional level as to why it's just really inappropriate. So today we're going to talk about that. And so make sure you comment down below. My name's Ray. This is my channel Life and Vibe. And I'm actually just putting out my opinions and just putting out my commentary on this. But I'm hoping that some of the things I'm going to say today may possibly have a little bit more weight and a little bit more validity because I do hold a license as a registered nurse. I want to throw out there, I'm not a therapist. I do obviously have to help patients manage stress and anxiety under the doctor's diagnosis and prescription of medications but when we do do charting uh, we will mm, also speak about cognitive things and that would be whether the patient has actually said I'm stressed or whether the patient is showing signs of stress anxiety so those are things that we note down obviously we always act as the eyes and ears for our providers and that is part of my job as a registered nurse. Now I do specialize in more things related to the cardiac system and so forth. I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, I have a Bachelor of Education also and I have obviously my concerns. I don't want people getting 
health advice from people who don't have the licensure to get it. And Rachel Hollis loves to put out there constantly that she's not a doctor, but in the same sentence will tell somebody to go get blood work done. I would highly suggest that you get blood work done. Okay, so another thing, I know everyone says it, but you know, if you like this type of commentary, I would love for you to join my community. It's a fledgling channel, and I'm just hoping to get more into the space because it's just exploding, especially with the explosion of social media. It is really exploding that we have just non-expert experts everywhere. So... I was actually watching another YouTuber's channel uh, the other day, and uh, so I'm gonna give a shout out to Kia's World. I really enjoy her content, and um, uh, Mac, and uh, Heather, the lawyer, and all sorts of folks. Um, so I've wanted to come into this space for a while because I've had uh, 20 years deflecting um, self-help in this country, but have had times where they've tried to lead me down that dark path into that uh, just absolute what I think is BS. Um, so I, am you know, have had, I always say, vulnerabilities that will put me out there. But I discovered uh, the other day that uh, Rachel Hollis is planning a tour of the uh, United States to some cities and I believe I'm not really trying to promote it because I think it's just like uh, what's it a tour of uh, I mean is she like um, touring because her boo thing is actually um, a tour manager I understand for Shawn Mendes and so, you know, is she now inspired with the idea of, you know, doing a tour uh, because she can see how that makes money? I mean, this is somebody who certainly is not opposed to trying to figure out a way to turn a buck uh, when it comes to trying to hand out advice to people. She may be also thinking like, shoot, if he's going on tour, then Girl Rach is going on tour too. And she loves the word girl because she started like 14 novels with the word girl in the title. And so she just really loves to like also demean women in some ways because I certainly would not appreciate at my age anybody calling me a girl, okay? I'm well into my 50s and to call me girl uh, is insulting to girls, you know, especially I, especially, you know, just, it would be just not appropriate. Now, I hope, since she's actually considering going on tour, um, that she chooses to take a tour bus because we know she hates sitting next to normal human beings on a flight because she finds their food to be offensive. And personally, I would find it offensive to have to sit next to her, uh, curling her nose and snarking her nose up at me uh, because I want to eat a tofu scramble uh, sandwich or something, you know, or whatever I have going on. It's extremely uh, hateful about actually having to even share a flight with anybody. So I think a tour bus would be far more appropriate in this scenario. Anyway, I didn't really, you know, she really didn't give a lot of details about what she would be doing at the events as she tours the cities across the US. And I'm guessing she's still going to see how the ticket sales go before she really sort of heads out the door. You know, maybe a tour of bookstores might be appropriate. I don't know, but I'm guessing she just was like, I just remember seeing the podcast or not the podcast, sorry, the, the, the video. And she, the girl literally looked like, and I'm gonna use that term because she loves it, um, she was gonna wet herself because she was so super excited. I mean, it was just like she was squealing and just, you know, I'm like, I'm only squealing because I think she's out for another cash grab and wants to give out some more, uns, you know, qualified advice um, to people and basically talk about things 
that aren't um, even relevant in the world of science or anything anymore. This is what I'm surmising. Is it going to be an evening with Rachel Hollis? You know, where the audience can ask her questions, she talks about her career, she talks about the books that she's written, you know, kind of like an evening with Al Pacino, uh, you know, some type of famous film or a uh, actor or, you know, some type of director where you're having somebody just like talk about what they've done. I mean, is she like, you know, trying to do like a party because she was a party planner? Is there going to be dancing and, uh, games and fun activities for the participants is she going to be like earth mother rachel because she's definitely been trying to get into the more spiritual side of herself you know with some yoga and meditation and some chakra readings and some crystals and some reiki healing or whatever the, they do in that type of um you know environment is she going to be suddenly reach the nutritionist uh, in, the, in some type of you know julia child's figure where she's you know teaching you know intuitive eating and intermittent fasting or keto or whatever the latest buzzy craze you know eating fad is at the moment i mean is she going to be doing that um is she going to be like you know courageous single mom after a divorce and giving advice to those women about you know how to get back in the dating game you know after she like was single for like a like a brief minute and then you know started dating long term the first guy she ever probably went out with again is it going to be like the big sister rage you know where she's holding hands with college girls and you know walking them through their 20s and first dating and getting your first jobs and she's had no experience at because she never went to college but she's going to teach college girls how to get through their college lives is she going to be doing like i'm the big boss lady and now i get to give employer advice because i've been an employer i mean she literally is going to grab like the pasta bowl from the kitchen in the olive garden and freaking like throw the whole entire thing of spaghetti up into the air and see which piece sticks I swear, because she's literally, if you listen to anything that she has recently released, whether it's a live, uh, YouTube, uh, Rage Talk, or a podcast, the Rachel Hollis show, or whatever, it's, you know, I, she has, like, run the gamut of, like, self-help topics, uh, life coaching, wellness coaching, I mean, you name it, she's going there, and she's an expert on it, obviously. We know the one thing, though, that she will not be probably trying to do, but you never know, is given marriage advice because she made a killing on that one and uh, then was found out to be pretty not truthful about where she and her husband, Dave Hollis, our friend, where their marriage was and then was like giving out very expensive talks and conferences and making, you know, a sizable amount of money in her business and then then suddenly claim that she had been having problems for five years in the marriage you know so i just decided to take a little bit more of a look not just my opinion but why other experts might think that this type of behavior not just from rachel hollis but from any of these non-expert influences why this is just becoming really problematic and why uh, is it becoming so normalized for us? I mean, we're demonizing our doctors, our scientists, and anybody who actually has qualifications and professional licensure, but then we're holding up in like awe and, you know, waiting on every word from somebody who isn't qualified to even give that advice. And it's, it's bloody dangerous, I think. And I think it's really inappropriate I think it's a crash grab for these people. Half the time I've said, like the Brendan Bruchard, they're failed, failed authors. And now, you know, they can see that people make a killing of this life coaching stuff. I mean, an absolute killing. So anyway, with that said, because I'm, now I got heated, because I just, I think it's disgusting the amount of money they make and the amount of just damage they can actually do because they don't know what they're doing so anyway 
let's get to the actual experts and see what they have to say with it. So I decided to look for, because anybody who has completed academic studies and written academic papers, even, you know, a, you know, postgraduate uh, level, will know that you have to cite people and any studies or anything that you're using should be within research, peer studies, within the last five years. Anything that's five years or older, especially in the world of science and medicine and mental health and so forth, it's probably going to be pretty dated and not actually what we are finding to be true at this time. But a lot of these self-help folks I've discovered love to quote like 60 year old studies and 40 year old studies and they love buzz terms. So I decided to just actually look at what a clinical psychologist um, would think about this. So I found, and I'm going to trash this person's name because I always do, uh, but I believe it's pronounced Goli Sadie Bocchi or Bochi. <laughs> I apologize. They are a PhD um, in clinical psychology, which they obtained from the University of Notre Dame. And not too shabby of a school. Not too shabby of a school. So she wrote an article back in 2019, and I'm gonna put all the links to all of my cited articles down below. Um, it was named The Problem with Experts in the Age of Influencers. And she, in this article, spoke or wrote, I should say, about how she became intrigued with Rachel Hollis and her book. And she does preface that she never read it and it was Girl, Wash Your Face. And she was on Amazon and she was looking at Amazon and she saw that this book, you know, probably fell into self-help or something. And obviously as a clinical psychologist, she deals with millennial media, decided to take a look. And it had 10,000 reviews and 4.6 stars. So she's like, wow, what is this? Um, but she actually became, probably the psychologist in her, more fascinated with what the reviewers were actually writing as their comments. And a lot of them were calling out, obviously, um, Rachel's privilege, that she's had a nanny and she had support and she had the husband who had obviously a pretty decent career, um, how she had been able to take the time to do maybe some of these things or write this book or you know give this advice because of some of the privilege that she enjoys and most importantly though was that the fact and i will uh, quote uh the doctor here to the fact that she was using her own life experiences to act as an expert on areas in which she had none the reader stated uh, very skillfully and with a lot of insight and very eloquently. Hollis does not have a formal degree or certification of any kind beyond a high school diploma. She is 100% unqualified to give advice in the areas of physical and mental health, relationships, trauma recovery, and life management. And then the writer goes on to say that she was still trying to kind of figure out why someone would prefer to connect with somebody say like Rachel Hollis to help with stress and anxiety or even to help them with areas of physical health and why rely on this unlicensed individual uh, than actually see like an actual mental health counsellor and I sometimes wonder is it because there's a stigma around mental health, so it's much easier just to pick up a book from somebody. Do people think healthcare providers, like your doctor, your physician's assistant, your nurse practitioner, won't be able to help them? Because people complain so much about the fact that there's so little time to see the doctor, and they didn't really understand what their problem was, and therefore they didn't really feel that they were being listened to the cost to actually see a real licensed professional was going to be too expensive. There's so many things that are broken in our healthcare system in this country that allows people to have access to healthcare and especially good mental healthcare. 
Is it because people are just scared, you know, like I said, to use their healthcare? I mean, like, I, this is an antidotal story for me, and I will point that out. I was in a dental office one day. I was talking with the staff uh, because I was there with, you know, uh, as a companion for somebody else. And so I had an opportunity to talk with some of the staff there, just talking about, you know, kind of like the cost of like dental insurance and so forth. And they were talking to me about their health insurance and how they get nervous using it because they get scared of the bills. I always remind people there are things within your health insurance that are preventative, that would be covered, that you shouldn't even have to pay anything but the copay to see the doctor. It depends on your insurance. So like I said, it's a crazy system and it can be hard to understand. I think sometimes that can be challenging and overwhelming as well. I always like to say, like, even though there are lots of these self-help gurus on there giving you just like positive phrases that you could stick on a post-it note in your window or on your mirror or wherever you want to stick it, there are lots of doctors who are, have channels on YouTube and who are really open about giving their you know, thoughts on things, there's dermatologists, there's all types of doctors that you can find. They'll always re recommend that you see an actual provider because these are, like myself, when I do anything in my health space, I can't form a relationship with the person because it would be unethical in, for me to do that. And I would always advise someone to see a provider. But having a source of information that comes from actual licensed individuals, I think is much more important than having Rachel proclaim multiple times she's not a doctor and that she wants you to go and get blood work. The fact that she's even saying that before you've spoken to a provider is not appropriate in my mind either. The person who reviewed Rachel's book went on to say, Marrying the only guy you've ever dated and having kids doesn't make you a relationship expert. It makes you a wife and mother. Losing weight and exercising doesn't make you a trainer or a nutritionist. It makes you a person who has eaten well and exercised to better health. And experiencing trauma and having a therapist does not make you a mental health professional. It makes you someone who has worked through their own issues. So what's the difference between our girl Rach and one of these experts. What is the difference? Because she's an expert on everything lately. I mean, she has literally been an expert on everything, it seems, lately. So, this is what the writer of this article said. Psychologists provide public advice or comment via print, internet, or other electronic transmission. They take precautions to ensure that statements, one, are based on their professional knowledge, training, or experience in accord with appropriate psychological literature and practice, two, are otherwise consistent with this ethics code, and three, do not indicate that a professional relationship has been established with the recipient. And as I said, the article, uh, I've linked, put all the links down below, but I haven't said that. This is, I'm just like kind of freestyling this at the moment. But I just want to say that she even points out that uh, obviously having a doctorate, a PhD, is the highest level of academic attainment that we currently award in this country. And so they, even if they have a PhD in a certain topic, they may not be an expert in other topics. So even the expertise of a doctor is and can be limited to their specialty. For example, a cardiologist is obviously not an expert on neurology. You know, the expert of the heart is not the expert of the brain. Now, would the cardiologist have a basic understanding and idea of the working of the brain? Absolutely. But are they an expert in that? No, they're not. And so they would refer the patient to the person who is. I know the oncologist, when I work with them, would, as a cancer doctor, would refer somebody to the heart doctor because chemotherapies and so forth can often cause 
cardiac abnormalities while people are receiving treatment that they could be during the treatment maybe after the treatment so we do have to monitor the heart the cancer doctor is not doing that other than making sure that it's getting done obviously seeing the results from that in order to decide on treatment modalities but the doctor himself is the cardiologist who's making that determination of what maybe is problematic in the heart in a long-winded nurse's explanation she goes on to actually say with the influencers and your bloggers and even some you know self-help youtubers and so forth the volume of bloggers and influencers has exploded with the rise of instagram advertising and marketing Everyone and their brother is pushing products, talking about their lifelong issue with gluten or IBS and giving you discount codes to purchase the remedy. While a select handful of these individuals actually bring in six-figure income simply from product pushing, one of the biggest dangers is how normalized it has become to treat non-experts as experts. And my thing that gets me sometimes really concerned when I was even reading her most recent uploads that I saw the other day on the stress and anxiety, just the number of readers' comments down there that are just like, oh my god, thank you so much, this is just what I needed. It's appealing as somebody who thinks, obviously, yeah, it's good to have a chat with your girlfriends. I mean, my girlfriends tell me stuff that makes me feel good all the time, but that should not replace an actual professional if you really think it's a long-term stress and anxiety then it may need to have some type of regulation of your actual chemicals of the brain and so forth but only a doctor can determine that and even here with our writer of this article they would say that they can't prescribe medications they're a psychologist medications for illnesses would have to come from your psychiatrist or a medical doctor they are the ones who can prescribe medications but you know what you know she i just feel rachel hollis is a snake oil salesman and she is just figuring out ways to make money from people. Whatever the cool thing is that she thinks is going to vibe with somebody and get her the largest audience and an audience that's going to be receptive to her advice and information, then that's who she's trying to capture. And it's no, we're not haters. We are just professionals who think that the rise of these these non-expert influencers is becoming way too normalized okay it's just curated things you know i love to cook i really enjoy it i'm a home chef i would never claim that i am a like a true chef okay if i want to watch a true chef cook vegan food then i'll watch avant-garde vegan I will not post my making of like my braised beets. You know, that's not probably gonna happen. I'm not even a nutritionist like that. So I think the thing that we need to make sure, especially when we're getting so much information, is that we're getting information from credible sources. And so that's like really the thing I always want to say. It's really important, I think this last point that the author makes at the end of this article. It is imperative that individuals do their research and due diligence. Read books, not just bloggers. And even then, make sure the author is credible in that domain. Then read some more. Yes, it sounds like a lot of work, but when it comes to one's body, enough caution cannot be exercised. I'm gonna paraphrase this last part. And she explained, because you know, these people always want you to do like meditation and stuff. As long as you don't have major trauma history, then picking up meditation should not do you any major harm. Sink that in, okay? 
So just you can't just offer it out to anybody. And that's why I think these folks are problematic. They never have disclaimers, disclosures. Half the time, they're not recommending you to speak to your physician. They are letting you know you read a thousand self-help books. They love to quote Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is just total pop psychology. It's been totally debunked. All needs are equal. And they will love to tell you about their self-actualization. It's just, that's why I say, you have to really make sure that you are very, very, very thoughtful in where you get your information from. But when it comes to supplements, foods, oils, exercises, and skincare, be mindful of the advice you heed. I don't think Rachel Hollis is really helping people. Maybe she does, they claim they do. The only thing I see her helping really at the end of the day is her bottom line. And her bottom line has been getting greatly affected. She's obviously can't do the marriage counselor, counseling conferences anymore. My debunking of the try and brain theory. Nevertheless, the try and brain idea has tremendous staying power because it provides an appealing explanation of human nature. If bad behavior stems from our inner beasts, then we're less responsible for some of our actions. This compelling tale of brain evolution arose in the mid-20th century, when the most powerful tool for inspecting brains was an ordinary microscope. Modern research in molecular genetics, however, has revealed that the trying brain idea is a myth. Brains don't evolve in layers, and all mammal brains, and most likely all vertebrae brains as well, are built from a single manufacturing plan using the same kinds of neurons. Just quickly. Recommended academic paper for those who want to nerd up on this topic a little bit more. It is the brain is adaptive, not triune. How the brain responds to threat, challenge and change. It was published on April the 1st, 2022 in the Frontiers in Psychiatry and can be found through peer-published studies at the National Institutes of Health. I just wanted to thank you all and I just want to thank all my new subscribers, anybody who even just watched to the end of this video. It was a little bit different from one of my just reaction type style videos. I wanted to just do a follow-up because so many creators this week have brought out great content regarding Rachel Hollis. So to those creators, Kia's World, Heather the Lawyer, there's Mary Ellen at OKish. Okay She's got great content too from the perspective of an actual therapist and mental health counsellor. And these are people with the ability to give some discerning thought on this. And so I just wanted to have people make sure that they too are knowing that the, we're not coming here from a place of hate, okay? We're coming here from a place of actual professional concern. People in the medical field, we are extremely busy. So we don't really have time to always address this to the public because we're busy doing our jobs. But I really wanted to take time to make sure that when you are getting your information about health or before anyone even suggests that you get blood work, you know, talk to your provider first, please. I'm hoping that we can build better relationships, um, especially after we've had a couple of really tough years. And I look forward to being able to, to maybe just get you to think maybe you know um question question who these people are and question if it's really appropriate to get advice from somebody just because they've got pretty pictures or they said something that resounded with you um just that's the hope for this channel and i just want you to keep your money in your pockets where they need to be and if the money does need to be spent it's going to be spent in ways that are really going to benefit you at the end of the day I appreciate you all for stopping by. Thanks so much and see you next time. It's going to be wild. <laughs> oh, and Dolly 
and Junebug. Thank you for taking time to be with me. These are my two puppy dogs down here that have just been giving me wonderful support while I record this content for everybody. Are you gonna come on out? Okay. Oh, you wanna be here too? Okay, we got a, it's a family affair in this household. 